Imagine a world where the lifeblood of the American West, the Colorado River, runs dry. Now, erase that image from your mind because scientists have just turned the tide. With a groundbreaking solution, they've unlocked a future where the river thrives. Stay tuned as we unravel this significant victory for nature and mankind. History and importance of the Colorado River. The Colorado River, a key waterway in the American Southwest, has an interesting story. It starts in Colorado's Rocky Mountains and travels about 1,450 miles, making it the fifth longest river in the U.S. The river and its smaller rivers provide water and power for nearly 35 million people in the U.S. and Mexico. The river's name, Colorado, means reddish colored in Spanish, which comes from the heavy load of silt it carries. It was the last major area in the 48 states to be explored. In 1869, John Wesley Powell led an expedition that first explored and mapped the Colorado and Green Rivers. For over 12,000 years, the Colorado River has been a crucial water and life source for Native American groups. It has also played a big role in shaping the environmental movement through its fights against dams in the U.S. The river has inspired many American artists, photographers, songwriters, and writers. Some of them include Merrill Mahaffey, an artist from New Mexico, who says his aesthetic settings for all the years he has been working is based on the Colorado River, and Pete McBride, a photographer who has been traveling around the world taking photos for over 20 years. One of his biggest achievements is walking the whole length of the Colorado River, including through the Grand Canyon. These people have used their art to show the beauty, challenges, and importance of the Colorado River. The river is more than just a water source. It's a lifeline for the Southwest. Its large system of dams, reservoirs, and canals divert almost all its flow for farming and city water supply. Its large flow and steep slope are used to generate electricity, meeting power demands in much of the Intermountain West. Crisis unfolds. Even though the Colorado River is very important because it waters farms, helps produce electricity, and gives drinking water to 40 million people, heavy use of its water has caused the last 100 miles of the river to dry up. It hasn't reached the sea often since the 1960s. Over the last 100 years, the area's temperature has gone up by 1.4 degrees Celsius. This has caused the amount of water in the river to go down by more than 11% each year. The changing climate and long periods without rain have made this problem worse. In 2023, the water level of Lake Powell was at 3,573 feet, which is higher than it has been in several years. Lake Mead's water level was around 1,044 feet at the end of 2022, and it was expected to be about 1,068 feet at the end of the year. Farmers and ranchers in the upper Colorado River Basin are getting paid to not use their water rights this is part of a program funded by the federal government. Cities are also using less water. The Navajo Nation is suing the Biden administration and three states because they want to be able to use water from the Colorado River. The Colorado River's delta used to be full of life, but now it's a dry, empty land. There isn't enough fresh water, so the salt levels in the soil have gone up a lot. This has made the soil poisonous and too salty for even salt grass, a plant that usually grows in the delta to survive. Scientists have found a solution. In the midst of a growing crisis, there's a glimmer of hope. Scientists have found a new way that could help the Colorado River. They've discovered a promising method that could increase the river's flow and bring back its natural balance. This method isn't just a simple tech fix, but a creative way that uses the power of nature. And this method could change the way we handle our water resources, making sure the Colorado River lasts for future generations. One of the methods scientists came up with is known as managed aquifer recharge. This means guiding extra water, like flood waters, 
or cleaned wastewater into underground water stores. These underground stores work like natural water tanks, keeping water for when it's needed. Scientists think that by filling up these underground tanks, they can increase the flow of the Colorado River during dry times and make sure we have a steady supply of water for the future. Another method is called the cloud seeding method. Cloud seeding is an interesting way to change the weather. It works by putting certain materials called cloud seeding agents into the clouds. The most common ones used are silver iodide, potassium iodide, and dry ice. These agents help water droplets or ice crystals form. Cloud seeding can be done using ground machines, planes, or even drones. When these tiny particles from these seeding agents touch the clouds, they start to act like condensation nuclei. This can help increase rain, reduce hail, or even lessen drought conditions, even though there's ongoing debate about how well it works and its impact on the environment, cloud seeding is still being looked at around the world as a possible way to change the weather. Challenges While the methods of managed aquifer recharge and cloud seeding have a lot of potential, putting them into practice isn't easy. First, these methods need a related teamwork between different groups. This includes different states, government agencies, and local communities. Each group has its own goals, which can sometimes clash with each other. Getting everyone to agree is a big challenge. Second, we need to invest a lot in infrastructure. For managed aquifer recharge, we need to build systems to collect extra water and guide it into underground water stores. For cloud seeding, we need special equipment to spread the seeding agents into the clouds. These investments can be expensive, and need a long-term commitment. Third, we have to think about the environment. We need to make sure the water we recharge is clean to protect people's health and the environment. This means any water we use for recharge, whether it's flood water or cleaned wastewater, must be treated to remove any harmful stuff. This adds another layer of difficulty and cost to the process. Lastly, there are also technical problems. For example, in managed aquifer recharge, we often face issues like groundwater mounding, well clogging, and interaction between nearby mines. For cloud seeding, controlling the amount and location of rainfall is a challenge. Too much rain in one area can cause problems like soil erosion and water logging. Even though there are challenges, the discovery of managed aquifer recharge and cloud seeding gives us hope for the Colorado River. These solutions are part of the growing trend towards using water in a sustainable way. They highlight how important it is to work with nature, not against it, to tackle complicated environmental problems. If we use these methods well, they could breathe new life into the Colorado River. They could ensure the sustainability of the river for generations to come. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you in the next one. Until then, keep exploring and stay curious.